All right, now time to drill down on the Apex uh, Commodities Exchange. Well, it's uh, mostly green on the uh, commodity market summary for the week ended 11th of April 2022. Most of the parameters closed in the green except the Apex Commodity Index. I was down about 0.69%. Well, we have uh, Michael Martin now, portfolio manager at Apex. He has the details. Great to have you, Michael. Good morning. Hi, Ladi. Good morning. Um, Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be here. Always great to have you. Well, uh, give us a rundown on uh, market activities for the week. Um, thank you very much, Ladi. Um, so if you look at the table in front of you, it gives um, the commodities market summary. Um, the total, uh, trans total turnover of transactions that happened on the exchange in the week under consideration um, you know, went up by a factor of 1345 um, from 0 0.72 billion to close to trading week at 9.63 billion. Uh, the total number of contracts traded on the exchange also went up by, 16 point, by a factor of 16.34 from 2.14 million contracts to close to trading week at 34, uh, more than 34 million contracts. The number of deals also went up by 58.12% from 308 last week to close to trading week at 487 deals. Uh, we, however, saw a slight decline in the Apex Commodities Index, which is the ACI, which fell slightly by 0.69% from 488.68 points to close to trading week at 485.32 points. We also saw a slight increase in the Apex Export Index, which is the AEI, which went up by 0.52% from 204.58 points to close to trading week at 205.65 points. Uh, with regards to the volume of contracts traded on the exchange, there was a general increase, particularly with Maze, which went up from now down 50,000 contracts um, to trade over 31 million contracts in the week under consideration. Um, soybean also went up from 1.17 million contracts to trade over 2.4 million contracts this week. Um, rice also went up significantly from 471 contracts to trading over 131,000 contracts uh, this week. Um, so those are largely most of the volume changes on the exchange. Uh, with regards to price, um, there was a general increase uh, with Cashew, which went up by 4.60% to close to trading week at 628 Naira and uh, 27 Cobo. Um, cocoa also went up by 3.13% to close to trading week at 1,259 Naira, 27 Cobo. Um, Sogum, however, fell significantly by 7.86% to close to trading week at 208 uh, Naira, 24 Cobo. Paddy rice also fell by 6.38% to close the trading week at 236 Naira, 43 Cobo. Uh, maize also fell by 2.82% um, to close the trading week at 233 uh, Naira, 55 Cobo. Um, soybean also fell by 1.97% to close the trading week at 395 Naira, 85 uh, Cobo. So those are largely most of the price, volume, and also commodity market. Um, changes in the commodities market that we saw on the exchange in the week under consideration. And as we always mention, if you want to know more about the commodities market, you can always go to our website, which is www.apexnigeria.com, or you can also download our app, which is available on iOS and also on Android. All right, Michael, thanks for the uh, rundown. Well, let's uh, take the conversation further now. We know uh, rising food prices are ringing, you know, alarm bells for households uh, all over the world. We've seen the UK inflation hit a 30-year high, US about 40-year high. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, inflation is rising. And, you know, we've had that debate, you know, about that sweet hedge, you know, for inflation. A lot of uh, <laughs> analysts have given different asset classes, you know, that can actually hedge. But let's look at commodity trading. Can it actually hedge against inflation? Um, yeah, thanks a lot for that question. I think it's very important considering the context you just met, you just you know you've just mentioned. Um, UK had a 40-year inflation high. The US also had a three-decade inflation high. Um, so one of the things we've measured, um, you know, at the commodities exchange is to measure the level of correlation, you know, between the commodities market and also inflation. Um, so one of the things we found out when we measured the level of correlation between the ACI, which is the commodities index, and then also, um, you know, the CPI, which is the measure of inflation in the country, you would tend to see about a 60 to 70 percent correlation between those two, um, between those two data points. And that tells you that, you know, if you see a large price movement in one, um, you would also tend to see See, you know uh, the same type of price movement in the other that tells you that there is a very strong relationship between both um, you know data points I think it's also important to know that the CPI is usually um, a lagging indicator of what has already happened in the commodities market because in the computation of the CPI itself um, you know you have the raw material
materials, which are the commodities or, you know, that we have a focus on the exchange. And even if it's not the raw materials, you have the finished products that are being measured or the price changes in the finished products you know, that, that are being measured you know, uh, on, a monthly basis in our, uh, on a monthly basis in our case. Uh, why they tend to say that you know, the commodities market is the edge or investing in the commodities market is the edge against inflation is that you don't tend to see that level of correlation um, you know, with other asset classes. Right? So take, for example, um, in, in the equities market, they tend to do well when, inflation, you know, when the inflation numbers are stable. Um, you know, fixed income market also does well, particularly with yields when inflation, you know, is high. And, you know, the government is trying to correct that by raising interest rates. And the reason why they say significantly that the commodities market is also an edge against inflation is because of return on investment, right? So the question is, if I invest in this asset class, will I get a return that is higher than inflation? And because of that level of correlation between the commodities market and also the inflation rate, um, you tend to see that the return on investment in the commodities market, um, you know, would tend to beat what the inflation rate is in that particular economy. Quite interesting. And, you know, we're seeing, you know, equity markets get rattled, you know, at this time. But, you know, what are the notable signals or drivers, you know, potential investors you should actually be paying attention to before uh, getting to, into commodity trading? Um, thanks a lot for that question. So I, I think the first thing is to note that, um, you know, there are different dynamics that play out within the commodities market um, that is that is significantly different from, you know, the different types of asset classes that you have, you know, whether that's fixed income or whether or not that's also you know, equity. So first off is that commodities market is cyclical. Um, and you have to take, because it's cyclical, you also have to take into account, you know, the supply and demand dynamics, which tends to feed into the final closing price of that particular commodity. So that's the largest, you know, indicator and driver that anybody investing in the commodities market should take note of. Um, another issue which is also, which, which has also become important in recent weeks is also, you know, government policy and, you know, more importantly, you know, geopolitics. I, I think we've spoken at length with regards to how, you know, the situation in Russia and Ukraine, you know, has affected the price prices of certain commodities like wheat, um, you know, and also oil too. I think aside from that, aside from the supply and demand dynamics, aside from geo government politics and, and uh, government policy and geopolitics, you also need to pay attention to the macroeconomic factors like you know interest rates, exchange rates, and then also as you, as you've already mentioned, the inflation rates. So those are usually the macroeconomics that tend to affect um, you know the commodities market at any given at any given point in time. Um, and of course, you also want to pay attention to uh, uh, you know this, the the seasonality of the commodities that you're investing in. Um, so when you put all those factors together, those are mo most of the major drivers that you should be paying attention to, um, you know, if you're planning on investing in the commodities market. Yeah, not, not an easy time to be an investor, Michael. But, you know, talking about <laughs> risk, you know, right now is all about, you know, the risk mm -hmm. of, you know, trading. There, there are also risk, you know, with uh, agricultural commodities. But what are the products available on the exchange exactly. that, you know, address, you know, different risk appetite for investors? Um, you know, thanks a lot for that question. I think, you know, for you as an investor, the first thing you need to figure out, you know, as you've mentioned, is your risk appetite, right? Um, so are you a, you know, risk averse investor or are you a risk loving investor? Um, currently on the exchange, we have, um, you know, different products that are available depending on what your risk appetite is. So I will just go through, um, you know, uh, about three of them. So first off, we have the spot contracts, which tends to mirror, you know, what exactly a stock does, right? So, so much in the same way a stock gives you a right of ownership to a company, um, a spot contracts give you a right of ownership to a particular commodity at an Apex accredited warehouse. And what you would tend to see is that, that, that you know, the price dynamic on a spot contract would tend to mimic what the price of that, what that physical commodity is also doing in the local commodities market. Um, you know, correlation can be as, as high as between 96% to, you know, uh, uh, 100%. Uh, and this tends to be a medium to a low risk product, uh, but it's also a high risk, uh, I mean, high return product, um, I should say. So you tend to see the return on this type of product range between about 30, you know, to about 40%, depending on the, depending on the commodity that you're invested in. Um, secondly, is also the exchange traded commodity, which is the ETF. 
uh, which is the ETC, um, anyways, which is like a basket of different spot contracts that you can essentially buy and hold, um, you know, over a 270 day period that would essentially give you uh, exposure to the commodities market. So, in addition to being able to buy individual, you know, spot contracts, you can buy, you, as opposed to buying just individual spot contracts, you can essentially buy an entire basket. And that basket gives you exposure to the, you know, to different commodities at the same time. Um, so, this particular product did about 68% last year over a 270 day period. Um, this year, the FETC, which, which is what we call it, um, you know, has done more than 20% for both the FETC1 and FETC2. And this tends, the return on this investment tends to range, you know, conservatively between 20 to 30% at any given period of time. Uh, and it's a medium to a low risk, uh, it's a medium to a low risk uh, financial product. Lastly, but certainly not least, is, uh, you know, fixed income products that you have on the exchange in terms of the asset back commercial paper, or you have, you know, the impute note, or you also have the trade finance note. Um, so these are essentially designed much in the same way fixed income products are designed with a guaranteed, um, you know, uh, investment return over a fixed period of time. And the, and the return on this type of investment tends to range between 10 to 15 percent, depending on the um, depending on the investment, depending on the particular investment product itself. Um, so those are broadly the three different types of products that are currently available on the exchange. You know, depending on what your risk appetite is as an investor. Um, soon to be also soon to also be part of the conversation is derivative product, which is another way for different participants, um, you know, to edge their um, you, to edge and protect against you know risk in the commodities market. And I should also say, you know, here that when you're investing in a fixed income product, you have a guaranteed you know rate of return which is not something that you essentially have with all the two different types of products like the spot contracts and also the exchange-traded um, exchange contracts. Quite, quite a number of products there, uh, Michael, and you know, you know how I like my returns. Thank you so much, Michael. Always great to talk to you. Yeah, always welcome, Lottie. All right, now we'll take a moment.